NSW. What's the worst thing that's happened at your family gathering? We were at my uncle's house for Thanksgiving one year when I was about 7 or 8. His Irish setter had puppies that were about 10 weeks old. My cousins and I spent most of the morning playing with the pups until the meal was ready. My uncle put the pups in their fenced off area of the garage so we could eat. Everyone started to sit down when we heard tires screeching on the highway. We all went outside to see what happened. Turns out the puppies had escaped out of the garage. Three of them were hit by a car on the highway. Two were still alive but their injuries were pretty bad. There wasn't a vet anywhere nearby, so dad did the only thing he could. He picked up both of the puppies, grabbed a rifle, and took them a few miles away to do what needed to be done. He was very upset when he got back. My cousins and I cried for a long time. That wasn't the best Thanksgiving I've had. Not mine, but HS Sweethearts. They are having a family reunion for the week in Myrtle Beach. Most of the family is gathered around the hotel pool, including her female cousin's family, husband, two young kids. A cousin's room is on the fourth floor overlooking the pool and she comes out to take a picture before coming down. When she leans against it, the metal guardrail snaps off and she plunged to her death in front of everyone. But my GF says she will never forget to her own dying days the sound of her cousin's body hitting the concrete deck of the pool. The silver lining is that the kids were too young to really understand what had just happened to their mother. I have never trusted a guardrail since hearing this. Oh. My god. That's awful. Best Christmas ever. My uncle took two days to prepare a dinner at his catering business. The spread was awesome. Tons of turkey, prime rib, veggies, pies, cakes, champagne. All the family was invited. My cousin who owned a bed and breakfast showed up with 10 people we'd never seen before. They formed a line and began loading their plates up while raving about the great food. My aunt asked me to ask him who these folk were, it turned out he had charged his guests $50 each to come to an all you can eat buffet. My aunt was livid, I thought she might attack her nephew for a minute. I was the guy who had to explain to the new guests this was a private party. They instantly turned on my cousin and began demanding refunds. I eventually got everyone outside under the B&B van, but the party was ruined. My aunt has a long memory, cuz wasn't invited to family functions for years. One of my cousins came into our annual New Year's party already on ecstasy, drank a lot, got into a fight with her parents and tried leaving despite being barely able to walk or talk coherently. She wouldn't give us her keys so when they were taken from her, she flipped out and started breaking car windows and kicking doors. My dad had to hold her down while she was screaming rape and all kinds of obscenities for hours until her human garbage roommate at the time, another story, came to get her 3 hours later. It was on New Year's so the cops were called by multiple neighbors but never came. Someone got stabbed at my wedding reception. So, that was fun. It was my brother and sister's dad and his girlfriend who had gotten into some drunken, knife-wielding fight in the parking lot. A Dothraki wedding without at least three deaths is considered a dull affair. I'm a little late to this party, and this isn't particularly bad, but I find it hilarious. Christmas Eve at my aunt and uncle's house. About two years ago, my great aunt brought her small dog, and one of my aunt's relatives brought her baby. The baby was new to walking, and her shoes got no traction, so she was falling a lot. The dog noticed at one point, and rushed over to her and starting sniffing her. The baby absolutely loved this, and figured out that she could let the dog chase her for a few feet, fall on purpose, and get dog attention. The dog interpreted things differently, and after this had happened three times or so, started humping the baby. Fortunately, my great aunt was able to grab the dog before he got too far, while everyone else in the room was laughing too hard to be useful. I don't think the baby's parents ever found out about that. Huge family reunion at the old farmhouse that's been in my family forever, and has recently been taken over restored by my uncle and his husband. Adults are downstairs drinking their way through a small ocean of wine, children are sequestered upstairs where they will not bother anyone or hear any dirty stories. In this story I am 8 years old and, like most children, have no sense of privacy or personal space. After about 10 minutes, cousins and I get bored with the movie we're watching and proceed to get into everything within reach, including, Wonder of Wonders a whole dresser filled with the best dress. 
up clothes ever. There were dresses and sequins and jewelry and high heels and feathers and all kinds of great stuff. So we decide we're going to have a fashion show. 10 minutes later, 5 small children are sashaying down the stairs into the heart of the party. Totally done up in my uncle's drag queen outfits. Best party ever. When I was 9, me and my brothers along with my aunt and cousins went to the zoo. I got into a fight with my cousin of the same age and punched him in the throat. We fought over who saw the cheetah first. It was me. I saw the cheetah first. I have this one cousin. She's single and in her 40s kind of a mess. And every family gathering she has a meltdown. She always gets too drunk. Yells. Cusses. Gets up in your personal space. Hits people. Drives home drunk. Breaks things. Tries to give the younger kids alcohol because she thinks it's funny. And overall just causes a huge scene every time. There's always something ratchet that goes down when she's around. It's sad because she's actually very smart and funny and relatively normal when she's not drinking. She was banned a few years ago from attending any more functions unless she doesn't drink and we haven't really seen her since. It's kind of sad. Pretty tame compared to the rest but... My GF got really drunk at my cousin's wedding reception and decided to boo someone when they were giving a speech about the bride and groom. With an exit of family gathering, maybe Thanksgiving, everyone decided to take that year's family picture around the big tractor my ex's dad owned. This thing had all sorts of attachments, including a pretty large backhoe bucket. Dad turns it on, raises the bucket a bit for the elder members of the family to sit on, then turns it off. The little kids pile up in the cab of the tractor. One of the ex's uncles had adopted this little girl who was weird. She decided to start fiddling with the controls of the tractor. Now, the tractor is turned off, but apparently the controls could still release the hydraulics. So down goes a bucket with grandma and grandpa sitting on it. Everyone starts screaming. Grandma is quick enough it get away, but not grandpa. Kid pulls the controls the other way, thinking the bucket will lift but it just keeps going down and pins grandpa's legs under it. Everyone is screaming, but kind of frozen until I nudge the ex-boyfriend and he turns the tractor on and raises the bucket. Grandpa is bruised but okay, though I doubt his legs were in the same condition after that. TLDR, weird adopted kid accidentally pins grandpa under a backhoe bucket during family photo op. That's totally the adult's fault. Okay so I have a cousin who can fart on command. There's a name for it but I cannot remember. He sucks in air while bending over doggy style and then releases said air as a fart. It's hilarious and we make him do it every time there's a family gathering. Anyway, we're all hanging out having a grand old time. When we hear his long awaited father coming home from work to join us all for Thanksgiving dinner. He's coming through the garage which is connected by stairs and goes directly into their family room. Whom only me, my brother and my farting cousin are in. Everyone else is chatting in the kitchen, so my cousin waits to the side, slightly out of view from the entrance of the door, waiting for his dad to come and so he can fart on him and we can all have a good laugh. His dad enters, he farts, frigate plop, something has exploded out of my cousin along with the fart, his pants are down, and shot across the doorway, narrowly missing his father and tacking sharply to the wall, like a spitball of crap. This was obviously hilarious so we all start dying with laughter. His father is crying and laughing. Everyone in the kitchen comes into a very confusing scene. The rest of the night was normal though. Just how cousins and us. Shoot him the crap. TL. DR. Cousin farts on command and launches. Collateral. Hilarity. When I read this I was dying. So I showed my dad. While he was reading this I was literally bent over from laughing so hard. My dad turns to me in the most serious face shakes his head and says there is something wrong with you. I was about 10 years old at the time and we went to a restaurant for some holiday because my family was super busy around that time and no one wanted to cook. We were talking about schools and my cousin says only poor people send their kids to public school. I looked at him and said so you're calling my family poor he looked at me and just made an arrogant face and shrugged. Something as simple and stupid as this caused a rift between our families for a few years. My dad got married again when I was 22. I used this excuse to start drinking at 9am. Needless to say at around 1 or 2 the next morning I am so fricked up and ready for bed. I don't remember making it back to my dad's house. 
I lived in the basement apartment. Apparently after getting home I proceeded to strip off all my clothes and get into my dad and his new wife's bed. Everyone else is still partying until late and finally the happy couple decide they've had enough and want to retire to their bed. Stepmom comes in and finds me passed out so she figures she'll wake me up by stripping the blankets off me. Boy was she surprised as naked me gets up and belligerently yells at her for waking me up. I then argue that it's my bed and I go to get something to drink in the kitchen. Another 20 of my relatives get the pleasure of taking in my naked butt. With some coaxing they manage to get me in some clothes into my own bed. I wake up 6 hours later with no recollection of the night's events. You gave the gift of an unforgettable story. My wedding. Leading up to the wedding. My wife's cousin gave us more drama and headache than anyone an N family has ever done. She was originally going to be in the bridal party, but she complained about not being the maid of honor. She tried scheming her way into the position and constantly belittled me and my family. Eventually, I told her she wasn't welcome at the wedding and she certainly wasn't going to be in it. She showed up at the ceremony, thankfully, quite early, and my oldest brother, also best man, alerted me and asked me what I wanted done. I confronted her and told her to leave. She refused, so I called the police and had her removed from the property. After the honeymoon, we received phone calls on the middle of the night so she could tell us how horrible we were. I filed for a restraining order and now the cousin, her mom, my wife's aunt, and an uncle that sided with the B don't talk to us. The aunt tried to hold a family meeting last year and didn't want me involved. I showed up and when she said I wasn't welcome in her house, my wife said then neither am I. I've heard through other people that, to this day, four years later, she's still talking crap about us to everyone she sees. TL. DR. B went from bridesmaid to restraining order. My aunt and uncle got caught banging in one of my grandparents spare bedrooms. Not a big deal until you find out that their respective wife and husband were the ones that found them. But, but beatings ensued. Police were called, and thankfully that was the last family get together ever. I sent them thank you cards. I'm kind of late to the thread so this will probably get buried, but at my dad's funeral, his mistress showed up and sat right behind my mom, my brothers, and I. She then began to sing loudly to the music that was playing during the slideshow, followed by her giving a speech about how my dad was her first love, and various bulls. My mom spent a few voluntary days at a mental institution after that. The woman was seen drinking a 40 ounce in the parking lot after the service. Step niece age 15 disclosed that my uncle wasn't in jail for 5 years for getting too many DUIs, but because he liked to make her suck his dong, 10 minutes before he showed up to a family reunion at a nature retreat cookout. 18 minutes later he was in an ambulance with a broken jaw, dislocated elbow and lacerations on the scalp from beer bottles. My older brother, my father and myself pled aggravated assault down to misdemeanor assault and battery. 8 years ago, never heard a word about his existence since that day. I was back in my hometown to attend one of my childhood friend's mother's funeral, the day that I'm supposed to drive back home, 8 hours away, my sister, me, mom, and dad were having lunch at the local burger joint, my mom starts complaining about heartburn, and after a few minutes, my sister, a cardiovascular icu nurse, says that mom needs to go to the hospital, after a few minutes, we finally convince my mom to go to the hospital, and my sister takes her, my dad and I follow in my car after cleaning up after ourselves, after my dad and I arrive in the awaiting room, a nurse comes out and says that mom wants to see my sister, a few minutes later, we hear over the intercom code blue, code blue, comma as my sister is walking out of the air, she tells us that the code blue is mom, we were lucky, mom survived her heart attack, the doctors said that if my had been anywhere else at the time she coded, she wouldn't have survived, they called mom's heart attack the widowmaker. I knocked my stepdad out last weekend, we were all at my parents house watching the local football game and he got hammered and started yelling at my mom, I told him to watch his mouth, he decided not to. Brother brings girl home from Asia. After dinner entire family gets completely wasted. Brother and girlfriend get into huge fight and brother baths in the bathroom sink. The next morning I walk into my parents house and they're making breakfast. The first thought on my mind was, thank god it wasn't me this time. 
my dad. Aunts and uncles had a big fight which resulted in my dad going to hospital after putting his fist through a glass window and cutting his wrist. One of my mom's cousins is cancer. Unfortunately, she herself didn't know that she had cancer because everyone else was sheltering her from it. Because apparently she doesn't take bad news well. Cut to a couple of months of medication. No chemo though. Later, we go and visit her. When my mom mentions in passing that this horrible disease runs in the family, but never to lose hope. Unfortunately, this statement stuck with her. And a few days after our visit, she asked her sister what my mom meant by that. Cue lots of drama and accusations. My mama and her sister don't talk now. There was a small fight that erupted that basically severed all deep emotional ties that my brother and I had for my grandmother. We have a cousin once removed who is the last baby in the family. Ever since he was born, our grandmother has clearly treated him as a favorite. She would buy him thousands of dollars worth of presents at Christmas time. We would get $20. Were we jealous? A little. But I think we were just sort of thinking how ridiculous it was because when we were young, we never had that much money spent on us. Anyway fast forward 9 or so years and the second cousin is obviously spoiled and usually bratty. I think it might have been Thanksgiving. But we were at my aunt's house and my brother and I were in the living room watching football and everyone else was in the kitchen dining room. The second cousin enters and just starts staying stuff to get a rise out of us. He started talking about sports and how he was capable of liking two football teams. My brother and I tried to explain fanhood to him and he went into the kitchen and dining room and told everyone in there that my brother had called him stupid. Well, crap hit the fan. There's yelling from our cousin. Cousin once removed mom, who said you called a 9 year old stupid and we said number and my brother said we're saying that he is lying. And she said oh, so you're calling him a liar and she stormed off with him and left. My grandmother yells at us that we are disgusting and immature for picking on him so we basically said everything that had been on our chests for the past few years about how it was ridiculously how much he was spoiled and how she was trying to buy his love. Don't talk much to my grandmother anymore. My brother and I have not received any cards from her since the incident. When I came home last summer, first time I had been back in 3 years she just sort of looked at me, wasn't happy or excited at all. I got $5 from her on my birthday which I found both hilarious and insulting. Yeah, we play for keeps. I would have mailed her that $5 back. To preface, my dad is a drug addict, and this was during one of his relapses. At Thanksgiving dinner at my great grandmother's house a few years ago, my twin brother was being a little crap and talking back to my stepmom. My dad kicked him out and told him to go eat in one of the other rooms. My brother decided to be even more of a little crap and went right next to us in the living room. There was no wall separating the dining room and the living room so it was all technically one room. And my brother said that he was technically in another room. So my dad grabbed him and pushed him onto the couch and starting choking him. We were 12. My cousin brought her boyfriend with her to my grandfather's 80th birthday party. There were lots of relatives around and my gramps brothers and sisters came with our second and third cousins. It turned out that one of our second cousins, a dude, used to be with my cousin's boyfriend. Turns out her boyfriend had a phase but our cousin was super gay. We weren't that close to him but we knew him well enough. Our second cousin was pretty wasted and when he saw my cousin's BF he basically tore some of the birthday cake and threw it at him while shouting frick you. You broke my heart you piece of crap everybody was mortified and nobody knew what to do. My cousin knew that his BF had a gay face but they didn't know that one of his exes was one of her second cousins. It was super awkward he was crying with cake all over him shouting you broke my heart. You piece of crap but their fling happened like 5 years before. When they were like 17 in a camp and apparently the BF broke the second cousin's heart. Safe to say it ruined the party and my second cousin had to leave with his mom and my cousin and her boyfriend left after a while. After the party my grandfather and I had the chance to talk and he was like did you see that crap? I almost pee my pants laughing. We laughed our asses off. I'm super glad my gramps didn't take it to heart but man that was super painful to see. TL. DR. My cousin brought her BF with him to my gramps day party and it turned out he was an ex of one of my gay second cousins. My hammered gay cousin threw cake and had a drunken monologue while my grandfather laughed like a maniac. 
at a Christmas dinner with my extended family, my cousin brought her M dealer, who was 30 years her senior, as a date. Also at the dinner was her husband, who she was still married to, and her baby daughter. It was quite an awkward dinner, to say the least. My aunt passed around pot cookies at family Christmas consisting of about 50 people. The night ended with quarters, the game they made up where you shove a quarter between your butt cheeks and stand over a cup and try to drop it in. Op said worse not best. Christmas 2012. My uncle got drunk and got very pee at the fact we did not have peanut brittle like the previous years the year before. I found out I'm deathly allergic. Got up from the table. Went into the living room and ripped the tree down and starting pee on it during dinner. I have not been to a family function since. I was always kept away from my dad's side of the family and I had no clue why. 13 years later we arrive in Bethesville, Arkansas and I can see why. Their accents aren't understandable. My female cousins kept hitting me asking my dad my age and permission to take me around town. My uncle Jimmy, 62 years, shot at a car full of a black men that drove past. And my auntie hid all the beer when the Baptist pastor came over to give a cheese tray from Walmart. We haven't been back. A friend of mine who wasn't ever good with the ladies one day showed up with this really awesome chick. They hit it off right away and it was like a match made in heaven. Then, they went to go to his mom and stepdad's house to have dinner where he was going to introduce his girlfriend to them. His mother was horrified when she walked in. Why? Because this girl was his sister and they had been separated at birth. The mother kept the son and the father kept the little girl. Fricked up thing as they stayed together for about two years after this. Continued to have sex. And acted like nothing was wrong with it. At our wedding we had a small dinner for the closest family members. We had already gone through the whole process of X and Y has to be invited or else. S. He gets upset if we don't. I held my ground. We made quite a few people upset and hurt by not having them invited. My mother-in-law still managed to push through her will and get her next door neighbor invited so that she could talk to her. But she had a beef with my wife. So the woman was seemingly irritated the whole time. But the weeks leading up to that was just a stream of stress over the invitation list. After that experience I just keep telling people asking about weddings that get two witnesses. Get married in another town in secret. Keep it a secret for a further week. Enjoy your time. Then announce it and get the crap. That's why I paid for everything. My mother-in-law wanted to invite a bunch of people my wife and I don't even know. But because I was paying I got final say. My sister had her boyfriend over for Christmas for the first time. We had met him but he was still a fresh face to the family. We played a charades type game where everyone had to write down a famous person and then one person would draw from the famous names and act that person out. I drew Paul Gasol. I was stumped. I had no clue who this was. It peed me off that someone would write a name and that wasn't a famous person everyone would recognize. I couldn't act anything out, and lost. Once the timer was up, I screamed out who the heck is Paul Gassel, my sister's boyfriend, admitting he was the one who wrote it down, said that basketball player for the Lakers. Po Gassel I screamed. His face went red and he looked so embarrassed. I felt terrible. 10 minutes later he got a phone call that his grandfather had died. Good times. Pretty strict family, I snuck home a bottle of vodka, my first year of college but most of my cousins were younger, and one of them passed out in the bathroom for 4 hours, and we managed to keep it on the DL, it was pretty impressive actually. I want to imagine a weekend at Bernie's type of thing. When I was 17 my family traveled across the country to attend my grandparents 50th anniversary. We ended up going out to a very nice restaurant for dinner. Near our table there was a pole. Everyone ended up drinking a bit and my grandma starts talking about the pole for some reason and how funny it would be if someone danced on it. Then my grandma loudly says this if anyone would dance on it it would be crescent smile. She looks the most like a stripper. I just kind of freeze and laugh nervously. I wasn't dressed inappropriately or anything. I assume this was her saying because I'm attractive but I didn't bother getting more details on it. I'm not incredibly close to my grandparents. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
bye for now.